friends. Welcome to Sunday's indoor greenhouse tour. We're going to take a look at all the plants that got started inside. Um, if you are new here, this is the Polish Potager and I am Stephanie. I'm gardening in Michigan in gardening zone 6A and I tentatively have a last frost date of the first week of May. I have a trouble cat down here, Miss Gracie. Um, that's something else to know about me if you've never been here before. I have got two cats and two dogs in my house along with a bunny. The bunny does not eat my plants. The cats and the dogs do try to eat my plants. So currently we are engaged in a war and we've each won some battles, but I'm determined to win the entire war. Um, I keep moving plants around and adding doors and barriers so they stop. Next year, mama needs a greenhouse. So I have got an indoor grow room down here which is technically a spare bedroom that I have added lights to here and here. And this is where I start all my seeds. I've moved seeds upstairs into my dining room and into my bedroom upstairs in an effort to keep them safe from the dogs and to take them away from the warm environment down here to try and get them started to harden off. So we'll start down here, we'll move upstairs to the dining room and we'll end with the plants upstairs in the upstairs bedroom. We'll start on this side today. Um, I have moved things around many times since I started their seeds, so they're no longer in any kind of specific order. I do try and keep plants of the same size together, so their light requirements and their water requirements are about the same. So these ones, you can tell, are more established that way, fitting out down this way. And when we get over to the other rack, those are all newer seedlings. So let's get a little closer here, and um, I'll start with this front row right here. These are some Zlati Lawn Chamomile that I'm gonna, this rack right here are things I'm potting up for sale. So these are extra chamomile. I've got extra hyssop and an extra scarlet kale cup and then some brunlet cabbage that's left. So this is kind of my working corner. So I'm working on these ones right now. Right behind them, this is a tray of mixed flowers. I have got, um, these celosias, they're called hippie celosia, and they're really small. I don't know how it's going, but the ones next to them are stock. And in the back, that's Sweet William. It's a double blend. I have Sweet William outside, but it looks very different than this, so I'm excited to see how those look. Right here, I've got Strawberry Gomfrina. This is something that I impulse bought when I was looking at seeds because it was so pretty in the catalog. I've never grown Gomfrina before, but it looks really pretty. My butterfly milkweed, I have tried this from seed many times and this is by far the best year. This will have a nice really pretty orange flower on it and be great for the butterflies, the monarch butterfly in particular in my area. And this butterfly milkweed is a native plant to my area, which is good for the bugs and butterflies. I've got Dara back here. Dara is in the carrot family. It's actually a flowering carrot. It's really, really pretty. If I can find a picture of it, I'll insert it here. Um, these are Cambridge Lobelia. It's a really pretty blue ground kind of sprawler. I use that in my rock garden out front. And then all this on the end is actually bouquet dill. I start my dill in three batches, one inside, one winter sown, and then I direct sow the rest of it. Back behind these, I have got a tray of zinnia and asters that I sowed a few weeks ago. These are aster, and someone told me that's called chamois chamois asters, um, a violet aster, and this one's called salmon janina. I grew this one last year and it was just gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, and then these are all the zinnias. They're all pretty big except for this one right here and that's on purpose. This is a profusion double. They grow smaller. The rest of these are like Benary giants, northern lights, I've got the queens um, over here, the queenie lemon peach, which is new this year, orange and red, the queenie limes. Very excited about all of these guys. Back over here, I've got just some random things that I've kind of needed a home. I've got some of these Senate marigolds, which are getting huge, and I should not have started this early, but they are a really pretty yellow, and I wanted to try those this year. I've got spotted bee balm. And I've got this Roseberry Daiquiri Agastache, and these need to be up-potted 
very much so. So they're kind of in my work area. And then here I have got the two cucamelons that ended up taking off really well. And I'm going to try and find some stakes for those to get them something to climb on short term. This tray right here is um, all needing to get up potted pretty soon as well. This is the Rose Rhapsody Salvia. These are in bigger containers, so they are okay for a little bit. Um, I have got the Dahlias here. Blazing Saddles, and there's Dandy Improved. I started these from seed. They do flower. Um, I know Dahlias are mostly grown from tubers. I'm bad at saving my tubers from year to year, and I'm too cheap to buy new ones every year. So I do the kinds I can do from seed, which are admittedly much smaller than the big, beautiful Dahlias, but they work for me. I have got Wild Thyme here. I've got a Painted Daisy. And then everything back here is Snapdragons. And if you've been watching for a little bit, you know that I came in and snipped and pinched off all these Snapdragons. And they are all huge again. You just snip them right off, ideally with scissors, but you snip them off right at the, can you kind of see that guy? Right above um, a leaf node. So I'll have to come in and do these again, but they're looking fantastic. I've got um, some different varieties. I'll see, I've got Cherry Twist. Those are new to me this year. Apple Blossom, that's new. Tall Max Blend, I have done that one before. Rose, I've done. Night and Day, this one's really pretty. I did that one too, it's from M.I. Gardener. An Oriental Lantern, these are new to me. Um, my absolute favorite Snapdragon is called um, Orange Wonder. It's from My Gardener, and I'm they were out of seeds this year, and I'm out of seeds. But I did save some random seeds, and I'm hoping that I get some out of there. I don't know which color they are, so we'll see. Here on this next tray, I've got cold hardy things in six packs that I have not up potted yet. I might, or I might be able to get them out before they need to, but I've got Calendula here on the end. We've got Snow Princess and Pink Surprise. And then I've got Red Acre Cabbage. I have 12 of those, and they are a good size. I had to re-sew these. My original ones did not grow. That's why I've got smaller ones down here. Blue Curl Kale I've started. i got 12 of those. I will not need all those. Some of those will go in the sale. I've got some more Scarlet Kale back here that is larger, and I actually really like that. That looks good. And then in the end, I've got some more calendula. These are, hmm, let's see what flavor. Zeolites, that's new to me this year. Pacific Beauty, Pacific Beauty is the one I like to grow. And this one says My Yellow. I saved a really pretty yellow color last year, but I wanted to make sure I could try and grow again. So those are there. Next door here on the end here. This is a mint mix. That's why it's looking crazy. I was wondering what that was. <laughs> that might need to get separated into a couple different pots. I've got some lettuce right here. This is that Tom Thumb lettuce. Doesn't that look good? It does need to get outside, but it should be outside pretty soon. And then I have these, these big fluffy ones. They're kind of, I don't know if you can translate it, but they're kind of furry. These are hollyhocks. They're biennials. All of these. I've got Carnival and I have got Shaders. I thought I had one more. Watchmen. Hmm, okay. Right here, these are incredible swirl coreopsis. I've got two cups of those. And here are pincushion mixes. Now, I've never grown Scabiosa, aka pincushion, and they look very different, these two. Maybe they're not the same. I'm gonna have to research that. I think I might be confused. Canterbury Bells here, they're all really small still. I've tried to grow these before without success. And these are new this year for me. I'm really excited. This is Silver Dollar Eucalyptus. I love the way eucalyptus looks. And it grows very, very slow. And I started these seeds very, very long time ago in January, right in the beginning for that reason. This tray right here is a six pack that's getting up potted for sale. I've got red mustards. Premier kale, more red cabbage, more blue kale cabbage, some extra celery, and I've got a couple of borage back here. And those um, are all extras of things I have elsewhere. The same thing for this tray 
and these two trays you're going to find when we go upstairs. I have got a whole set of these up in my room. Those are for my garden, but um, they are pretty much cold hardy things. So Sicily cauliflower. This is a pretty purple headed cauliflower. I have got, what's this guy? Copenhagen market cabbage. That's more Sicily. These are all Copenhagen market cabbage. Up on top right here, I have got spring robber peony broccolis. And I have got Waltham broccoli. Those all look really good. And then I've got one more tray over here. And this has got Brussels sprouts in it mainly. These are nice looking starts. So these are all ones that I will sell to whoever wants them in the spring. Probably in about two weeks. I will get them hardened off before I give them to people so they will not kill them as soon as they take them home. Moving on to this rack over here. These are things that are newer that I'm keeping a closer eye on. This top rack and this middle tray down here are all peppers. We'll look at those in just a second. These are mostly flowers and herbs next to them on the sides that are just slower going. And down here are all my tomatoes I've started so far. I've been very worried about my pepper starts because they've been very, very slow this year, but they're taken off just fine. They do seem to like the spot up here a little bit better. These are the nata peños. I've got tons of these because I wanna make cowboy candy this year and can it. And my family does not love heat, so I'm doing nata peños and jalapenos. Jalapenos are slower going. Um, I have got my first poblanos coming up here. Those look good. No tequila sunrise yet. Hmm. Oh well. Back here I have got just a, a mix of peppers. These are all hot peppers. <laughs> I have these cayennes coming up and they got purpley leaves. I had a purple cayenne seed pack, but I didn't think I planted it, but I could be wrong. Tabascos are starting to come up. I got a fish pepper back there coming up. Sugar rush peach. These four right here, Zulu, Riwia, um, Etiuda, and Nocturne are all Polish heirloom peppers. And all of them except that Nocturne are coming up. And Nocturne is notorious for having a terrible germination rate. So um, not sure what's going on there. These over here continue to be a mystery. I could look back at a video and find out what they are, but I just have chosen not to. All right, let's go back and look at that back one. This back rack is banana peppers. I did tons of banana peppers because myself and people that buy my seedlings love them. I do have some of these giallos and the rosas. Those are from Haas Tools. Those are new to me this year. My first Carmen is up. No purple Marconi. This will be the second year in a row if I don't get any of those. Gypsy pepperoncinis. Pippin's Golden Honey is a great snacking pepper. They're nice and little and multicolored. They're so pretty. No Jimmy Nardellos. Same thing with those. Second year in a row, I'm not going to get any. Hopefully... I'm just being paranoid. They'll be all right. Here is the last pepper tray. I'm having some slow growth on some of these bell peppers. I do have a king of the north up, it looks like. Some lilac bells coming up. But my shishito peppers are doing really well. And then I've got California wonders back there. So this might have been bad seed. This orange sun might have been a couple years. This king of the north was just last year, though. I should have had some stuff there. That's a little disappointing. This tree right next to it's got those ground cherries in it that are slow going, a viewer told me, so I've decided to leave them alone. And then my single seed challenge. Look how pretty she is. We should give her a name. What's a good name for a single seed challenge seedling plant? It's a shishito pepper. If you don't um, know much about the single seed challenge, uh, you can follow the hashtag, hashtag single seed challenge. 2023 and there's growers all over YouTube and Instagram I believe that are sharing taking one seed and growing it up from baby seed to harvest and just following that one plant's journey so that's really cool <gasps> look at this oh this is exciting do you see that one this is Dithonia it's Mexican sunflower and I didn't get any last year and I was so sad I just not want to focus, but you can see. She's there. That green? Oh, baby girl. I'm so happy to see you. They get really big and really pretty, and the butterflies and bees just love them. Then I got... I got a whole tray of um, basil back here. 
it is needing to be thinned out. You can see I'm starting to lose some of them. So I'm going to have to go ahead and up pot those pretty soon. And today is fertilizer day. So I will get fertilizing with those shortly. And then here's this tray over here. It's kind of a random assortment of flowers. This balloon flower is new to me. Tulsi, Vera Lavender, and Ella Campaign are all herbs. These tornado ivies are um, geraniums, trailing ones. They're so pretty. I have a couple of videos about how I saved the seeds on those. This cumin looks terrible, but it's still green. So I'm going to throw it outside. I don't want to get rid of it. We've got delphinium slash larkspur all right here. And all these beautiful, tall, pretty guys are lupins, lupines, however you say it. I love them. I've got some mixed snapdragons right there. That's what I'm hoping might be some of those orange wonders. Those are also mixed snapdragons. If not, I'll just have to get them next year. It'll be all right. I also do have a couple little cups over here with my owls. These are Genevieve's basil. And these ones up here are chive. I'm gonna sell those as little herb sets. Those are cute. And then down here are the tomatoes. Now, tomatoes, in yesterday's video, we went through and looked at all the ones that have come up. So I will link that below if you wanna check out which tomatoes are up. But pretty much I sow all my tomatoes, multi-sown in cups, and after they get their true leaves, I go ahead and pull them out and give them their own individual little pot. So these are all just getting started. These four over here in this tray are all heirloom slicers. And this is the tray we planted yesterday. These are production paste varieties that I'm hoping to get um, a lot of good meaty tomatoes out for sauces and uh, stewed tomatoes and for salsa making. And then back here in this corner is a bunch of calendula. It's all that Pacific beauty. That's a really good one to use for making like salves and stuff for skincare. And the color looks weird in these ones because they're under these funny lights. <coughs> <coughs> and then I have these two pots down here. This is my lemon tree and she looks so rough. And this is my own fault. I had her under the lights doing really well. She had plenty of new leaves. Oh goodness. And then I moved her up next to that window on that shelf right there. And it was apparently too cold there for her. She'll be all right, but I might have pissed her off a little bit. And then here is my horseradish, which I planted. And um, I don't know how long it takes to come up, but I'm keeping it well watered. And hopefully we'll see something soon. Fingers crossed. All right, I'm going to take a break really quick. And I'm going to go ahead and fertilize down here. Um, I do have a video about that that I'll link to if you want to check it out. But I use um, Neptune's Harvest Fish and Seaweed Fertilizer. And I just have a small container of it in the house. You use about a cap of that per gallon. And I just water them today with this. And I try and do it every Sunday so I know which day it is. Now this is the rack that was in my dining room that I had some plants on that I moved upstairs, which we'll look at those next. But I still have some plants on the higher levels of these because the cats can't get to them. And I'm going to move these outside relatively soon. These are celery. And this is some lettuce. This is big Boston bib lettuce. Here's the other tray of that celery. And I mentioned this a couple times, but um, this is celery that is for sale. And then I have another lettuce. This one was a free seed uh, prize head. Ooh, and this needs some water. All right, so I'm going to water these guys, and then we're going to go upstairs and look at the plants that I moved upstairs to save from the cats. Okay, so we are upstairs now. Gracie's in the window. You guys cannot eat these plants. This has not gone as well as I thought it would. Um, it has very much made me decide that I'm going to get some kind of greenhouse set up next year outside. Even though my plants are doing well, I'm so tired of daily fighting the animals for them. So we'll be getting some kind of greenhouse. See you out there. I know. Definitely not garden outside season yet. Okay, in this first little tub, this is where I have got my green globe artichokes. And these leaves that are dying right here are fine. Those are just the seed leaves dying off. 
these two big cups are full of um, Italian giant parsley. I cannot harvest enough pars parsley. We use it constantly to make our own homemade vegetable dips and in other cooking, so I dry a ton of it in the second half of the season. These here are the onions, and these can probably go out to my porch next week, probably. I've got the Elsa Craig's yellow sweet onions right here, and a couple red weather field. I'm trying to get storage onions. If you've watched any of these, you know that onions are the bane of my existence. Here I have got all of the violas. Here, I better go this way so you can read the tags. Um, I have Blue, Perfection, The Late of Fire, and I also have oh, one other variety that the cats have taken the tag from. Awesome. All right, so we'll find out. Um, this next tray right here, let's see, I've got my Russian tarragon. That looks really good. This is a really nice sturdy plant. It's already getting a little woody. I've got some marjoram back here. These are parsleys. These are just the single regular parsley. It's the second thing I sewed. Here, back here, are my columbines. Mountain mint. That looks good, too. Nice. I do have some cilantro back here. That can handle the cold. Garlic chives. The scarlet kale is so pretty. Ugh, it's pretty. Hyssop chive, these Lottie Lawn, these really need to be thinned. I just want to get them outside as fast as I can here. These are the marguerite chamomile. These are the ones with the um, white flowers and these have the yellow flowers. Over here in the end is the three curl parsley. This is the parsley that gets really, really curly looking. You can see it starting to take shape a little bit. It's not going to have the flat leaves See those, aren't they pretty? Oh, so cool. I got a little parsley over here and then this French rosemary is doing well. And you can see all these are leading this way because the window's this way. I'm gonna flip them all around today after I water them. And I'll do that every couple days. This tray back here is, let's see here, we got Brunswick cabbage, Copenhagen cabbage, kales, this really pretty Sicily cauliflower. This is that purple one. Some ornamental fringe kale. Back behind it, I've got mustards. This is the giant red mustard is what it's gonna be. These huge things right here on the end are borage. I've got two of those. I have got some Brussels. Right here I have got some Swiss chard. It's the bright lights version. I love all the different colored stems I get with that. And then I've got the rapini broccolis all right here. Back in the corner, these are all of my celery. And I've got some broccoli here. So these guys are all doing really well. I'm gonna go ahead and water them, flip them around, and, um, and they'll get some better sun that way. Okay, so that is all the plants in my house right now. The plan is to move them to my covered front porch with a little bit of plastic, um, giving them some wind cover and a little bit of heat next to the house. Um, and I'm going to do that as soon as temps kind of stabilize where they're not dropping below 25 at night. Um, and I'm not doing this with all of my plants. Obviously, my tomatoes and peppers cannot go outside right now. Many of the flowers cannot. But cold, hardy plants that have been hardened off, like the ones up in my room with my window open, those ones can start going out as soon as I can um, get the temperatures, like I said, to stabilize about 25 degrees because I'm gonna put them next to my house so they'll have the heat from my house and then I'm gonna have a plastic covering to trap that heat during the night and, um, and they're gonna be protected from wind and rain and all the elements because they're gonna be under that covered porch. So we're gonna try that. You might see another failure video in the future, but that's what we're going to do. Right now it's looking like maybe another week and a half, so about 10 days. Until then, they're all living in here.